Hey everyone, Holly Grant here with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department's Coastal Fisheries Division. I'm going to spend a little bit of time today talking about geotaku or fish printing. So back in the 1800s, way before cameras were invented, fishermen in Japan needed a way to record what fish they were catching and how big these fish were. So what they started doing is they started catching their fish and painting them with a type of ink and then making an imprint of the fish using that ink and a piece of paper. That way when they got back to shore, they'd have these pieces of paper to prove that they were actually out catching these really, really big fish. They called this geotaku, where geo means fish and taku means rubbing. Traditionally, this process was done with just black ink on a really thin sheet of paper, but eventually it actually grew into this really big art form. And some of the artists began to start incorporating color and maybe even some environmental or background images into their artwork as well. And there are two ways that we can do a geotaku print. The first way is the direct method where you would actually directly paint onto the fish itself and then put a piece of paper on top of it to create that imprint. And this is most similar to what the fishermen used to do way, way, way back. The other way that we can do a fish print is called the indirect method. So the indirect method, you would still have your fish, but instead of painting the fish, you'd actually put the piece of paper down first, and then you would use what's called a tampo, or it's pretty much just like an applicator, or a type of like paintbrush almost, and you'd use that to kind of transfer the image of the fish onto the piece of paper. So today, we are going to make a print using the direct method, and the fish that we're going to print today is called a flounder, and the reason why I chose the flounder is because it has a lot of really cool adaptations that I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about. When a flounder egg hatches, it looks like any other fish and acts like any other fish, but as it starts to grow, one of its eyes will actually move from one side of its head to meet the other eye on the other side of the head and it'll start to settle down and it'll spend most of its time laying on the bottom of the ocean. So to get a better visual of that, I have a flounder model that I wanna show you guys. This model, it has nice bright yellow eyes. It's not usually like this in real life, but it's good here because you can actually see that it has both of its eyes on one side of its head. The other thing you'll notice that this fish is kind of brown and a spotty color. That's because the flounder likes to lay on the bottom of the ocean, kind of like this. So if you can imagine, that really brown spotty color helps it to blend in very well with its environment and makes it a lot easier for it to catch its prey. Other than that, it acts and has the same features as any other fish. It has eyes, a mouth, some gills, a bunch of different fins and a tail. As I'm painting our fish today, I'm going to paint each one of these features a different color and we can label them once the painting is dry. So speaking of paint, I think it's time for us to start painting. We are gonna be using the direct method here today. The materials I have are just some regular washable paint, some printer paper, and then I have a rubber fish that I'm gonna be using here today. But if you have a real fish and you wanna use that, you definitely can. You just wanna make sure that you've cleaned all the slime off of it and that you've patted it so that it's nice and dry. All right, let's get started. So let's start with painting the body. I'm going to paint the body blue. Uh, and remember that flounder have flat bodies, which allow them to rest on the bottom of the ocean. So while I'm doing this, what I want you guys to notice is that I am trying to make sure that I apply just a really thin coat of paint. So if there's too much paint on the fish itself, it's going to end up getting really hard to see some of the small details of the fish. So things like the scales. By applying just a thin coat of paint, it makes it a lot easier for us to see these really small details once the print is complete. So the next thing that I'm going to paint are the eyes. I am going to paint the eyes green. So because the flounder spends most of its time laying on the bottom of the ocean, both of its eyes are on one side of its body and that allows it to help it see better. Next up is the tail. I am going to use yellow for the tail. Fish use their tails to help them move forward in the water. So this would be something similar to a gas pedal in a car. And then I also want to paint the fish's mouth. So let's paint that orange. Adult flounder typically eat fish, but sometimes they'll also eat shrimp. So just like other fish, flounder have fins. We are gonna paint those fins red. So these fins help the fish move through the water. They use their fins to steer themselves, almost like a steering wheel inside of a car. So flounder sometimes use their fins to help them bury themselves in the sand. Thank you. 
All right, guys, so this is it. This is our print. What do you think? I think it turned out pretty good. So it's still wet right now, but after it dries, if you want to, you can add additional details. So something similar to what I did with this print here. So I added information about what the different features are of the fish. I added some detail also by the eyes and the mouth and on the tail. I've included its scientific and common name down here. But as far as other things that you can do to this once it's done, really the sky's the limit. If you wanna add some of the critters that flounder eat, you can do that. If you want to paint it underwater, go for it. If you want to include maybe a date and your name, again, the sky's the limit. So really get as creative as you want to with this. So with that, I think we're ready to wrap it up here. Teachers, if you would like to use or borrow a set of these rubber fish for your classroom, we have a set available in our Coastal Expo kits, which are available for loan. The best way to find information about that is just going to be by Googling Coastal Expo Kit, and all of our contact information should pop up on a Texas Parks and Wildlife Department webpage. And if you guys do end up doing your own fish prints, I want to see them. So go ahead and tag us at TPW Discover and I hope I get to see some of your prints. Thank you guys, bye.